Hi everyone, I'm Amy with Booktube Amy, and today I'm actually here with Carolyn Sparks, one of my favorite authors at Katie Budget Books in Houston slash Katie, Texas. So, hi Amy. <laughs> hi everybody. <laughs> so she's here to talk about her new up or a new release book. It's been out like what two weeks, a week and a half, something like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. And if you have not picked her first book in the series. Remind me of the names. <laughs> I always get confused with names. Oh, okay. The first book is How to Tame a Beast in Seven Days. Yes. If you have not picked up that one, this is the second book. You have to pick up the first one. It's an amazing book. It's such a really rich world that I am just head over heels in love with. It is a fantastic series. Oh, thank you. Keep writing. I'm just, oh, I, I know you uh, just keep writing them. So I have a couple questions for you about the series. Okay. Um, and I have my trusty dusty phone here. Uh, the first one is, of course, describe your series. Okay. It was originally pitched as Game of Thrones meets the Princess Bride because I did want a fantasy type world with lots of danger and suspense and uh, paranormal elements or like Game of Thrones, but also I it's like Princess Bride because I can't stay serious yeah. for very long. Though, If you know me, if you've read the Love at Stake series, you know I, I get silly uh, and I actually write romantic comedies and uh, and so these are still romantic comedies but they, they are very different from the Love at Stake series. In fact it just takes place on a whole different world mm -hmm. and uh, so there's a fantasy element to it and uh, this world has two moons mm -hmm. and twice a year the moons eclipse and as the people on the planet call it they, they embrace. On that night any child born will have some kind of magical power and those children are called the embraced. Okay. Now this is, a, since it's a medieval type world with kings and you know everybody wanting power and, and uh, all this intrigue going on, the kings of course don't want a bunch of children around that have magical powers that they don't have. So mm -hmm. generally they try to kill the embraced off when they're, when they're babies. And so the story, this series begins with five girls who have grown up in a convent on an island where it's safe to be embraced and they were all uh, taken there as babies because to save their lives because mm -hmm. they would have been killed on the mainland. And these girls, as they grow up, uh, they will become the five heroines for the books. Uh, each book has a different heroine, a different love story, a different uh, heroine and a different hero. Um, and it, this is a world that is torn apart with war and destruction and these five girls are destined to become to bring peace to the world as they uh, grow up and fall in love and uh, the second book here so I married a sorcerer this is the second sister the first one was uh, how to tame a beast in seven days that was the first sister uh, Luciana and she met Leo who had the he was also embraced. His power was the power of lightning. He could zap people with his fingers, which makes it kind of hard for a romance. But <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, you know, if you touch him, you die. So <laughs> that was a challenge to make a romance, but uh, it worked out at the end. You'll have to read it to see how. And this one, uh, the hero is Rupert, a pirate. This is uh, taking off from Princess Bride influence there, but it's lots of fun with Rupert the infamous pirate and Brigida, the second sister. Rupert, his power is the power of the wind, which uh, as a pirate that makes him undefeatable. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, I do have one question that I, I just thought of. Uh, the, the girls at the island, does everybody know that they're embraced or is it kind of just like you're a nun, we don't know about you, is it? Yes, is it like yes, all the, all the nuns know uh, and the girls have had a safe haven there where they could grow up and feel loved and, and protected. The islands, uh, because they are island people and they are uh, the sailors and the merchants that live on the island, they use the moons to navigate. So there they actually worship the moons. Mm -hmm. And the t when the moons eclipse then and the, and the embraced are born, they are honored on the island. Okay. Uh, but on the mainland, the people there uh, worship the sun, they consider the moons evil and they embrace the evil. So they, they were safe on the island and everyone knew they were embraced. Mm -hmm. Uh, but once they go to the mainland, their lives are in danger. Okay. Um, my, well, I guess that would be now my third question. What can we expect in this new book? Any twists and turns or anything unexpected? Well, Rupert the pirate, uh, he has a secret identity. Mm -hmm. 
and so you get to find out who he really is and why he he at the beginning he kidnaps Brigida. You'll figure out why what he what he intends to do with her, and she figures it out because her magical power is when she touches someone, she can see lost uh, lost things or hidden memories, and so she gets gets clued in on who he really is and starts to figure it out. Uh, this book was pitched as Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> meets the Gladiator. All right. Because at first uh, he's he's a pirate, so that's the Pirates of the Caribbean part. Uh, but the Gladiator part um, is a competition toward the end that this uh, evil king sets up for uh, his sister Brigida, and. Uh, it's like a gladiator games. It's a series of games uh, with seven men, and they have to. The the loser of each round will actually lose his life. So it's a very dangerous competition there at the end, and uh, Rupert actually ends up in the games, fighting t to live and fighting to make sure that he is the one who wins Brigida. Yeah, that's a good. That's a that's a good goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, staying alive is always yeah, good. Always good. So what's your who's your favorite character in your new series? Oh gosh, favorite character. It's just like the Love of Steak series. <laughs> really, I, my favorite character is always the hero that I'm currently writing. He's the one I'm in love with at the time. So right now, my favorite guy is, is, is not on He's sale not yet. On sale yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, that's the third book that's coming out next March. Uh, uh, that one's called um, Eight Simple Rules for Dating a Dragon. Yes, that cover is already on. I saw the cover on Goodreads. That's a beautiful cover. It is. It's uh, very nice. Your covers are gorgeous. Just yes. wonderful. They've been doing a really good job. So no, covers. no, like uh, this is my favorite character so far. Everyone seems to love Brody. I love him I too. I love Brody. Uh, everyone loves Brody. That's my favorite character. <laughs> He's so funny. Yeah, he's he's a, a dog shifter, and um, when you think about it, especially in a medieval type world, that the castles were always had a pack of dogs running around, mm -hmm. and so he just blends in with the dogs, and he goes and he listens in on conversations. He's actually a spy, and then he goes back and reports what he's learned. So he can go anywhere in the on the mainland into any castle, just blends in with the dogs and <laughs> spies on people. <laughs> I think that's an awesome idea. That's really cool. I, I, that, yeah, that's my favorite character. He's just so funny. And I love it when he just transforms. He's just like, this is who I am. <laughs> uh, okay, so where do you get your characters' names or characters' names from? Because they're not like Bob Smith. I, I couldn't come up with Bob Smith. <laughs> Well, sometimes it's just names that I really like. Like the heroine in this one, her, her name is Brigida, and that's left over from Sound of Music. I always just thought that was a really pretty name. It is. And the guy, Rupert, I've always loved that name. I've always wanted to use that name for a hero, and it was perfect for a pirate, I thought. And um, Leo, I always liked Leo. Uh, that's the hero in the first book. And Luciana, I think it's a pretty name. I just, I pick names that I, that I like. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to type them a million times. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well like them. Yeah, I'm a, I should like them. Okay, so with the characters from the first book, the the main hero and hero, hero and and her the main two characters from the first book, will they be appearing a lot in this book, or will they just be like passing? Through? They they do uh, show up, and uh, you actually get to meet the children that they have, the babies. And uh, this is similar, to, I guess, to the Love at Stake series, where I was always able to bring back. Uh, couples from other books so that you could see what was going on. I do the same thing with this. And uh, so basically you have this that, that same deal of a, a growing family of uh, people. And um, yeah, you get to see Leo and Le Luciana from the first book. And um, and Brody, of course, keeps coming back. Yay. That's just As long as you keep bringing Brody back, bring him back in every book. I think Nevis appears in this one too. Yeah. Sweet. So those are all my questions. So um, if you haven't picked up this book, pick up the first one first. I'm still, uh, I'm just having an image right here. If you haven't picked up this series, definitely pick it up. Start with the first book. I, 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 can you read this book if you just pick it up and be like, uh... You can read it, but I, I think it always, it's always a better read when you read the first one. I agree. And especially with the world building you did in the first one. Yeah, definitely read the first one first. 
first one first. And if you haven't picked up her, her Love at Stake series, you should also pick that. That's my favorite series so far. So, But this may change with the book. this book. I have not read this one uh -huh. quite yet. Uh -huh. I have not, but I will. But anyway, if you haven't picked this up, pick it up. Definitely pick it up. It's an amazing series. She's awesome. The, the comedy comes through and it just makes, it just, it's just a book that it makes you smile no matter what you're doing. So yes, if you haven't picked up, definitely pick it up. Thank so, you very much. Thank you very much. It was good to see you. Thank you. All right, everybody have a nice day. All right, bye.